Hey guys, it's WT here from the Corn Alley. It is Wednesday, November 7th. And in this episode of the Corn Alley, I'm going to discuss the new firmware update to the Trezor. I have the original Trezor. Um, so uh, there is a new update. In this update, it allows you to actually start storing um, your Digibyte on your Trezor wallet. Now, if you remember, about nine months ago, I um, posted this video here on how to store Digibyte uh, coins on Trezor Wallet using uh, a backdoor method that they had um, implemented. And I know some of you had had issues with uh, this process, but um, with this new update, um, you should be able to save your Digibytes if you have Digibytes directly on your um, Trezor wallet without actually uh, having to go through this uh, list of steps. I'll show you guys how to do that coming right up. Let's do it. And we're back. Welcome back to the Corn Alley. I'm your host, WT. So this morning, I got this email from Trezor that there was an update available to the Trezor 1 and the Model T firmware, which will allow you to um, start storing your Digibytes uh, to the wallet, along with some other enhancements. Uh, says here, time flies fast, and we are ready to bring you yet another firmware update to keep our services in the best possible shape. So both Trezor models receive a firmware update today. The Trezor Model T is updated to firmware 2.09, and Trezor 1 gets an update to firmware 1.71. Now, the new firmware versions are available only in the Trezor beta wallet. So if you have a Trezor wallet, you know that whenever there's a new firmware or whenever they do push out some of these new firmwares, they're available either in the actual Trezor or in the beta Trezor. Um, so the wallet, uh, the Trezor, um, the Digibyte coin wallet will be available within the beta. So uh, here I have the beta link and um, we're about to update our firmware. So as you know, to update your Trezor, first you want to make sure you have your seed key because um, if your Trezor gets wiped, you will need to have your seed key so you don't lose out on your funds. So I'm going to unplug the power button or the, the power cord and then you hold down the two little buttons on the, the, the Trezor 1 and at the same time you um, let go of the buttons as you are plugging it back in. So I'm going to click. I have my um, seed key. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to go through the process here of updating my Trezor. It doesn't take very long, um, less than a couple of minutes, to actually go through the process of updating Trezor so we can take advantage of the new enhancements. All right. It says I can now unplug my Trezor wallet and I'll plug it back in. It says here we are all set. All right, enter my PIN number. Enter a password or a passphrase. All right, so we're back in, and when you click the the little drop-down list here, you'll see. 
Digibyte is now listed along the list of assets. So let's go back here to the article here. Um, it talks about the Model T now supports an array of new coins that may uh, many of you have been waiting for. And Trezor One now supports a new communications protocol called WebUSB. Um, its coin support has expanded as well. And let's look at what changes. Uh, let's look at these changes uh, closely. So let's scroll down here. So if you have the Model T, um, added support for Monero, Cardano, Stellar, Ripple, Tezos, Decred, um, Grosselcoin, Lisk, Zencash, and Zcash, Sapling, Hard Fork. And then uh, down here, uh, we have our Trezor One, which is that's the unit that I'm using. The original hardware wallet, Trezor One, has something in store for its customers as well. The new firmware version 1.71 adds the support of WebUSB for both Trezor Wallet and Trezor Password Manager. These changes allow users of Google Chrome to connect to Trezor Wallet and TPM directly without the use of Trezor Bridge. With the right cable, you can even use Trezor One with your Android mobile device or Chromebook. It says they're starting with this new firmware Trezor One now supports Lisk and Stellar. I have another video that I'll post on Stellar here shortly. Um, I'll post it after this one a little bit later. Just like Trezor Model T, it supports Zcash, Sapling, Hard Fork on Beta Wallet and Seedless Mode. P.S. Digibyte is uh, Digibyte in Trezor Beta Wallet. If you are a Digibyte fan, and I'm assuming you guys are since you're watching this video. Um, you'll be happy to know that starting today, you will no longer need to manually enter a DGB backend uh, server as a custom server for Trezor Wallet support. Digibyte is now one of the Trezor Wallet supported coins accessible from the dropdown that I just showed you here. So here's your Digibyte. And we'll uh, need to enter our, I need to unplug it and plug it back in again here. All right. So after I've entered my PIN number and everything, I didn't even have to go to um, I thought I would have to send my Digibyte over, uh, but I didn't have to. Um, it recognized that I had Digibyte stored on this Trezor. So that's pretty awesome. We have, what, 27,284 Digibytes that have been stored here since um, February or April. I did purchase some additional Digibytes in April. So... Guys, I hope this uh, was an easy, quick tutorial for you to follow. Uh, we did update the Trezor. You have to access the beta wallet. So beta-wallet.trezor.io. Uh, beta um, if you had entered or if you had saved your Digibytes using the backend process or the backend um, using the Bitcore server in the past, after you've updated your Trezor, um, wallet to the new firmware 1.71 and you're actually logged back into your wallet then you should see your digibyte stored directly on the wallet and we can go back and forth um, between them like that just by selecting another um, asset I think I have some Litecoin on here and there is my Litecoin and then you can go back to um, Digibyte or any other um, asset that you might have on here. I don't see Stellar at this present time, um, but I'll figure that out. Maybe it's inside of the 
uh, the actual wallet itself and not the beta wallet. In fact, I'll actually check and see if that's the case. So I checked out the native um, wallet in Trezor and I didn't see uh, Stellar listed, um, but I'll figure that out later. And if I figure that part out or if I, um, I'm able to determine exactly where the option for Stellar inside of Trezor is located, I will make an updated video on that. So guys, if you did enjoy the update, um, I'm glad I was able to bring that to you guys because I I know a lot of you had had issues using the the steps in this video. Um, once you, you you did enter your backend server, you had to do it each time you logged into Trezor, and that was a pain in the butt. So I'm really glad that the um, the guys at um, Satoshi Labs um, Trezor have finally gone ahead and support. Um, digit uh, digibyte inside of Trezor uh, without you having to go through those extra steps. All right, guys. Hopefully, you found this information of use or, or helpful. Please give me a thumbs up, and as always, please comment. And if you're new to the channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe uh, for other great content and information uh, that I'll be uh, posting um, out in the future. All right, guys, hope you have a great week. It is Wednesday, um, might be Thursday if you're in the other part of the world. Um, but if you have any questions about these steps, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer those questions for you. All right, guys, until our next video, take care of yourself and of course each other.